I'm Faith, and welcome to Faith's Take, where I talk about anything and everything that I find interesting. And welcome to my review of Rift Tracks Live, Carnival of Souls. This review was suggested by Sketchman on one of my recent live streams, and I thought it was a perfect way to end the spooky season. This live show was simulcast from the Belcourt Theater in Nashville, Tennessee on October 27, 2016. This was actually one of the rare Rift Tracks live shows I wasn't able to see in theaters, and honestly, this was the first time I got around to seeing it. So I had the freshest eyes when prepping for this review. So let's dive right into this review of Rift Tracks Live, Carnival of Souls. After a quick greeting from our usual trio, plus a mysterious stranger who must have rushed the stage before security could get to him, we start with one of two shorts for this presentation, and we open the night with quite a weird one, an Encyclopedia Britannica short entitled The Dirt Witch Cleans Up. In this short, the titular witch is simply so gross and filth encrusted that she can't interact with regular society anymore, and starts using her powers to make everyone else as dirty as her. It's sad, honestly. Now that's already a bizarre concept for a hygiene short, right? Well, hold on to your pointy hats, because it only gets worse from here. The dirt witch meets a little girl, and she relays her troubles to her. The girl has pity on the witch, and says she'll help her get all clean. And yes, sadly, it's going exactly where you hoped it wouldn't be, as we watch this little girl bathing this fully grown stranger claiming to be a magical witch. Welcome to Rift Tracks Live Carnival of Souls. I'm Kevin Murphy. This is Mike Nelson, and... Um, uh, who are you, and what have you done with Bill Corbett? Happy Halloween. <laughs> Happy Halloween, sir. What, what, what is your name? Uh, I have all names and no names. Ah, I see. I am a man of mystery. So is the mask the cause of your pasty face and irritated complexion there? Is... I do not know why you say this. I, <laughs> I feel like I am a very handsome man. <laughs> we have a little short for you. Um, it, is, it is Halloween. And uh, witches are known to uh, flit about in the sky on Halloween. They're not really primarily famous for being magic or for being evil. It's mostly that they're dirty. Yes. Like the, they have hygiene issues. The more powerful the witch, the dirtier they are, man. That's right. So, like, you know, like Pigpen from Peanuts is a very powerful warlock. Yes. <laughs> Let's roll the dirt witch cleans up. Oh, God, whoever decided to freeze this shot needs to be on an FBI watch list. I can't, I can't look. Uh, I was finally released from my hellish suspended animation, and now I'm being crushed. I'll make them change before your sight. Well, Bernard F. Peters did not react well to that New York Times review. <laughs> you hear that weird noise, Shrek? <laughs> they have a Gandalf scarecrow. You shall not perch! <laughs> dirty I am, and dirty you'll be, and then you'll see... That, um, <laughs> you're dirty, as I, as I already said. She has a very narrow focus for someone with power over reality itself. <laughs> <I> <laughs> just, <laughs> she enjoys herself. I saw what you did. The forces of light will rain down upon you, Dark One. And a dirty old witch I never wanted to be. This is how most Hufflepuff students end up. <laughs> Please help me. If that's all you want it, sure. And the child was delicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh. Wow. It's going to be one hell of a night, folks. <laughs> Hunker down. Kids, don't just go home with strangers, bathe them. Yeah. Common courtesy. Toesies first. Now your feet. For more video like this, try the entire internet. Take a look in the mirror and you'll see. Is this really me? A Maggie Gyllenhaal? Turn me back! After that madness, there's still plenty of insanity to spare as we head into the next short. ACI's Masks of Grass. And if that sounds familiar, yes, this short is from the same ACI responsible for at your fingertips grasses and all the other makeup crap into different kinds of crap educational shorts. This one, while not part of the at your fingertips series specifically, does seem to tie straight into the grass short. Perhaps this is a spin-off of sorts in the ACI universe. If you remember the original grass short, you may remember the fancy headdresses and twisted masks the children made out of dried weeds near the end. Well, this short is 100% just those crazy masks and headdresses. 
I guess there was so much the original short didn't get to, they had to do a semi-sequel to it. I don't know who was asking for this back then, but I am sure glad we have it now. We have another little uh, hors d'oeuvre for you. An amuse-bouche. A little popcorn ball for your bag. This is from one of our favorite releasing companies, the ACI Film Company. This is Masks of Grass. Yeah. So let's... uh, Again. They're they're in on the grass thing. Let's roll Masks of Grass. Masks of Grass. Masks. Masks of Grass. 20 seconds in, and it's already madness. (laughs) The Sky God commands you, do my bidding! Grass grows everywhere in the world. On beautiful, well-kept lawns. Like this? <laughs> it grows everywhere. And yet, we rarely notice it. Start noticing grass, oh, damn it! Really look at Short grass, tall grass. The more varieties, the better. And the quicker we get a mask on Masks that kid, the better. Uh, oh, I welcome your hatred. Grass stems are so strong that you can make a loop bar. Goodbye, cruel world. Bill's comment pushed me over the edge. And they said it'd never amount to anything. Ha! <laughs> look out, ladies. <laughs> it might look something like this. Uh, it's searing into my soul, you guys. Uh. It's easy, whatever base you use. All you need is different types of grass and a little imagination. And a friend with no self-respect. A few last touches, and it's ready. (laughs) That smiley face should become a frown now. (laughs) See, it's a ready... Ready. Uh, Hey. Egg crates can also be used for holding eggs. By really? making little holes in a crate, it. this will form the base of what we call the Indian headdress. Help! I'm problematic! Yeah, I'll say. All you need or... My new master rises. Time for the blood harvest. Jaws nigh! <laughs> They're already a more interesting team than Suicide Squad. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, Bill does some of the work for me in introducing the film's director and main antagonist, Herc Harvey, who, if you saw my Skydivers review a few weeks back, you'll know is the director of many educational shorts from the Centron Corporation, including the one from that episode, Why Study Industrial Arts. But this film, his only film in fact, is considered a cult classic in the horror genre, far removed from the usual fare of his that we're accustomed to. And we're off to the races, quite literally, as the film begins with two cars full of youngsters with a need for speed. These nameless boys challenge these nameless girls to a quick race. And while clearly two of the girls are uncomfortable about it, the driver decides to take them up on it. And if Teenage Strangler has taught me anything, it's that drag races never end well. And that holds true here, as the girl's car plummets off a bridge into a deep river. Hours of searching past, and the car can't even be found with the would-be rescuers assuming it's long gone down the river. But miracle of miracles, the blonde woman named Mary somehow has come out alive with no memory of how she did it. Only two days pass, and she plays the organ at her local church for the last time, as she's decided to move from Kansas to Utah, a lateral move really, to continue to pursue her church organ playing career somewhere far from the place where her friends died needlessly. Though the locals attempt to convince her to stay, they understand her decision. Um, now to our feature presentation, Carnival of Souls. Oh, yeah. uh, just a couple of quick bits about this. This was uh, directed by Mr. Herc Harvey. That Herc. is a real name. Herc Harvey directed a little short. We, we like to call, and he liked to call, Shake Hands with Danger. So we'll let you do an A-B comparison with yeah. uh, Shake Hands with Danger and Carnival of Souls. Um, That's right. Well, let's get on to it. Let's roll uh, Carnival of Souls. Grab it up. Come on, man. Get ready. He has a straw hat. What choice do we have? Racing at speeds up to 30 miles an hour yeah. or so. Very reasonable. <laughs> Go grease lightning, your time and bell's about to snap. Grease lightning. Go grease lightning, you really are a piece of crap. Grease lightning. Go grease lightning. Miller just came on the radio. This is the only way to escape it. <laughs> yes, Candace, you're the star of the movie, but we want our credits to look like the program for a third grade choir concert. Half 
off an old log sticking out of a river. In Kansas, this pretty much counts as a national park. <laughs> sure, as high as this river is right now, and with all the mud and sand it's carrying, they may never find that car. In fact, they've given up and are playing with a toy boat instead. <laughs> All right, now let's hear your story about how it happened. It wasn't our fault, sir. Detective Lyndon B. Yeah. Johnson on the scene. The first one's on the bridge. Years later, Kansas residents still spoke of this moment as the day something happened. Did we, did we win the race? Where is it? How'd you get out? Yeah, put this on. We better get you back to town. Are they communicating telepathically? What? <laughs> now it's not moving. <laughs> the other girls. This feels like Rod Serling should step out and do a monologue. Yeah, the only Rod they could afford was Rod from Birdemic. Ah. Yes. Uh, drag racing. I think it's dangerous, so I gave it a 50% discount. It's dark, but you can see solar panels in the Twilight Zone. <laughs> Thank you, Rod. Rod from Birdemic, special guest star. Here we go. Organ playing is like cooking Russian food. I, I'm not sure how to tell if you're great or terrible at it. <laughs> hey, Pete, can you remind me why we hired a staff organist here at our tool and die shop? <laughs> well, Mary, you'll make a fine organist for that church. Be very satisfying to you, I think. It's just a job to me. The Pope says uh, the same thing. Not quite the attitude for going into church work. It's okay. I'm not taking the vows. I'm only going to play the organ. Boy. Want more than that? Of course, it doesn't pay much, but, well, at least it's a start. Now, my wife tells me that before every one of these live shows. Ben, this <laughs> evil. Your ship will come in no, someday, no. Kevin. Yeah. I, it's a start. I, I, you're I, young. I, 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 Stop by and see us the next time you're in. Thank you, but I'm never coming back. Hooray! Oh, I mean, we oh, oh, really don't leave. leave. I'm sorry to see you go. Yeah, yeah. it's too, too bad. bad. Yeah, maybe in her place I'd do the same thing. Put on a dress. Just pick up life again. Lipstick and a blonde She's wig. So yep. quiet like she fools you. After driving back over the death bridge, Mary exits whatever Kansas town she's from and eases on down the road to Utah. But unlucky for her, the music gets creepy to let us know something bad's gonna happen. And it does, as she sees a ghoulish white face reflected in her window. It quickly disappears, only for the man to be standing in the middle of the street. She drives off the road, but thankfully isn't on a bridge and is able to make it out of the ordeal without a scratch on her. She stops at a gas station and asks the attendant what a thing we as an audience can't see is, and it turns out to be a currently defunct carnival. Apparently it used to be a happening place, but now it's been left to the mists of time. After an honestly pretty nice edit, Mary ends up in her new boarding house and tries to get settled. But weirdly, it's a boarding house with only two boarders in it, herself and a man by the name of John Linden. Already a bit sketch if you ask me, but Mary doesn't really question her new landlady, Mrs. Thomas, about it. Unfortunately, her spooky vision has followed her, and our director slash ghost man is once again outside her window. But, once again, it turns out to be nothing, and she goes about her night. Folks, if you enjoyed that shot of her furtively staring at something in silence, I have some great news for you. <laughs> um, a lot of people seem to be popping champagne and waving at me. I've never heard of a good riddance party before. I wonder who it's for. That shot inspired Stanley Kubrick when he was making The Shining. Really? Yeah, it inspired him to make it good so that nobody would confuse it with Carnival of Souls. Okay. A quiet white woman maintaining the speed limit. This should be the Utah state flag. <laughs> Folks, we know you can't see it, but have a really good look at it. Yeah. Can I talk to you about the Church of Latter-day Saints? <laughs> You'd think that someone who almost just died in a car crash would look at the damn road more often! Oh, I'm a terrible hitchhiker! Hey, you know what? Maybe cars aren't the mode of transportation for you. Yeah. Not your thing. Horror movie service stations. The best place to get told, cause nobody goes up there these days. <laughs> Could you tell me what that big structure is back a few miles by the lake? Oh, you mean the old bathhouse? Yeah, I got a lifetime band. Then they put those buildings up out there and made some sort of a carnival there for a while. <laughs> uh, that's years ago, though. Just stands out there now. Ralph's gas and overly long answer station. <laughs> 
Oh, sure. Well, that's just right over here a little ways. Hang a left at the inky void of nothingness. Uh... <laughs> it's just about what I expected. I knew you'd like it. Not what I said. <laughs> There's a regular room in the house. If there's anything else you need, uh, I guess I'll have to wait till morning. I could use some Ajax. Don't have any. Uh... Oh, damn it. I forgot to pack the organ. <laughs> Did you get the Ajax? <laughs> <laughs> I just remembered my friends died horribly. Woo, what a week. <sighs> the next morning, she heads to her new job to test out the church's organ and see how it goes. And evidently, this church has a very insightful minister, as he immediately can tell Mary's ready to shut herself away from the world. Though, given the grisly experience that happened literally three days prior, you can't exactly fault her for that. And just like back home, everyone in Earshot is absolutely in love with her organ music, as if she's some kind of prodigy. And maybe I'm just organ illiterate, but it sounds no better or worse than any other organ music I've ever heard. Well, except maybe this one. The minister offers to drive her home, and she asks if they can stop by the old carnival grounds, and he accepts no questions asked for some reason. It's especially weird since he knows they can't go in anyway. This, of course, only intrigues Mary more. She gets home and takes a bath while Mrs. Thomas fixes her a plate for dinner. Then Mary, being not too bright if you haven't realized that by now, opens the door in just a towel, only for it to be her new neighbor from across the hall. The creep steps into the room, and then instead of saying, hey, could you give me a sec, and locking the door behind her, she leaves it cracked open, giving him ample peeping opportunities and giving me a nauseous stomach. Utah Church, I'll, I'll just assume this is Baptist. <laughs> We're not the largest church in this area, of course, but we have a nice congregation. Okay, it's just me. We'll have to have some sort of reception. You cannot live in isolation from the human race, you know. Mind if I try this now? I want you to. Typical first day orientation stuff. Here's the break room. You cannot live in isolation from the human race. <laughs> I'll be next door at the vents if you need me. So this is, uh... This is how it's supposed to sound, then? <laughs> it's not broken. Oh, sounds like there's a new organist for me to cut up with my shears. Hey, Chuck, it's Marvin, your cousin Marvin Berry. You know that new, dreary, soul-crushing sound you're looking for? <laughs> well, listen to this! This church expects organ music 24-7, Missy. Get back on the keys. Chuck, Chuck. Well, the pavilion's up the road a ways here, just past this clown murder museum. This used to be quite a place. It's been deserted for a long time now. Will you take me in? My goodness, no. It isn't safe out there anymore. Plus, it sucks. That's why they put up this barrier. <laughs> be very easy to step around it. There ain't no boarding house, but I got some coffee and the sandwich makings left. I could bring you some up after a while. Mayonnaise Good. and Wonder I'll Bread sandwiches with extra so mayonnaise. Take as many as you want. Yeah, yeah, Dirt Witch, we get it. You take baths now. Yeah. Get back in your own movie. Gotta hurry. Can't wait to show my rockin' bod to Mrs. Thomas. <laughs> oh, I thought you were Mrs. Thomas. Nope, name's Norman Bates. Do you mind getting back in the shower? <laughs> ah, the pervy neighbor theme. One of Mozart's finest. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Mary Henry. Oh, yeah, I know. Learn some manners with you, Tony. I, uh, <laughs> I heard you tell Mrs. Well, I'm just kind of a guy who doesn't like to eat by himself. I've made arrangements to eat in my room tonight. <laughs> I if uh, you change your mind, you just holler. No, I'd rather eat my toothpaste than go out to dinner with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to marry that man someday. <laughs> After that gross scene, she leaves her room, perhaps to preemptively call the authorities, when she sees her ghostly figure downstairs. As usual, he doesn't really do anything, just looks at her and leaves. She locks herself in when Mrs. Thomas finally shows up with dinner. Mary asks if there's another man in the house, or if Mrs. Thomas has seen anyone, but gets nothing but a firm no siree from the old gal. Unable to sleep, Mary watches the pavilion from outside her window. 
First thing in the morning, Lyndon slithers over with coffee, and after having a miserable night, Mary seems genuinely glad to see him, which has got to be the scariest thing in the movie so far. They converse rather pleasantly, I guess, though as an outsider looking in, it really feels like he's gonna try to wear her skin or something. Hey, I'm going to KFC, you want anything? Or... Alright, well I'm going, you can have a biscuit if you want. Or... Cutting back on carbs. <laughs> you know, she might be a Muppet. That yeah. might be the twist in this movie. <laughs> Me and you and Mr. Linden. Us three is all there is in this house. But, but you must have passed him out there. Pale. Kind of looked like Robert Pattinson's dad. Along with that, it's these old houses. They, they're big enough so that you could... Hide a man in every corner. <laughs> Not that I have taxidermied man stashed in every room. You just <laughs> have enough to let your I'm imagination Andy run away. <laughs> Don't drink the coffee if coffee keeps you awake. It won't. So she brought four gallons of coffee and then told her not to drink it? <laughs> coffee never keeps you Hi, I'm the pavilion. Is this going anywhere? <laughs> well, good morning. <sighs> I heard your alarm. I knew you'd be up. Guess what I got? A uh, <laughs> pot of warm Vaseline? Uh, I, I don't know. Start the day off right. Two cups of coffee coming up. Also, I hope you like early morning harassment. I just didn't know you were a church woman. To me, a church is just a place of business. <laughs> well, that's a funny way to look at it. Why? People seem shocked because I took a job in a church, and I, I regard it simply as a job. I'm a professional organist, and I play for pay, that's all. Why is she suddenly delighted to have this guy in her home? The world is so different in the daylight. But in the dark, your fantasies get so out of hand. Hey, don't mention fantasies within a mile of this guy, all right? falls back into place again. I want to give him an opening. I studied it in college. I could have gone to college. I mean prison. I could have gone to prison. Yeah, I used to play good football, but they wanted me to take a lot of classes and things, you know? Well, they're that way. Well, I'm just as smart as the next guy. If the next guy is a turtle. Well, I just didn't dig with the other teachers. <laughs> now, what I cared about was girls. Didn't they offer a course in that? If I would have done that, I would have graduated. Wait, he doesn't have a PhD in women's studies? <laughs> What's the matter? This morning, you're exactly what I needed. You're going to need me in the evening, too. You just don't know it yet. Uh, I think some grease actually I came off the movie the screen part. there. Oh, the shower it spoils the flavor for tomorrow. It's been a pleasure, Mr. Linden, but I'm sure you have to get to work. Why don't you? No, I have the whole day free for shopping. Eh, just as well. The judge said I had to introduce myself to all my neighbors. Eh? <laughs> After that uncomfortableness, Mary decides to spend her day off shopping in town. She senses something in the dressing room, and when she goes back out, the sales lady she was just talking to can't seem to see or hear her at all. In fact, no one in the store will acknowledge her existence. She decides to wander through the park without trying to get anyone else's attention for some reason, and stops at a water fountain. Yup, cause when I suspect that I'm suddenly soundless and invisible, my first thought is to hydrate. A man, who she suspects to be the ghoul, hovers over her, and she runs into the arms of a guy who happens to conveniently be a doctor. And he can see and hear her just fine. She heads with him to his office and describes what's been going on to him, and he explains, quite rationally, honestly, that having just been through a near-death experience that took the life of two friends, her mind could easily be playing tricks on her from the trauma, but she insists the ghoul man is real. And much like her new boss minister, the doctor tries to encourage her to rejoin society. Despite his pretty dang sound advice, given what she's been through, she decides that since the pavilion seems to have meaning to her in all of this, that she's gonna go investigate it herself to either prove her wild thoughts right or invalidate her fears once and for all. The drape is just fine. Otherwise, it looks very nice. And if you're planning sure to mold you your hair into a shatterproof dome, I know just the place. We all could look here to oh, God. How many price tags are back here? I pulled off like seven already. Jesus. Attention, shoppers. There's a gas leak in women's apparel. Those hallucinating the undead get 10% off all evening wear. Not a lot of foot tra traffic here at Forever 71. I believe I have you deliver the dress if you don't mind. No, you'll have to speak up. That's noise canceling okay. hair. <laughs> Why don't they answer me? Ma'am, I'm a customer. I don't need to acknowledge you. 
Donka donka donk donk. Shake hands with danger. Oh. Damn it, Herc! Focus. Sorry, sorry. One movie at a time. Herc. Sorry, sorry. Uh, lady, do you mind if I wash my other sock? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What is it? That man. I didn't mean any harm. I just stopped to get a drink. I'm a real actor, I swear. That strange man was there. Now look, look, you've had a fright. Hysteria won't solve anything. Now control yourself. Look, I'm Dr. Sam. Free range physician. My office is right across the street. As though I had no place in the world. No part of the life around me. In short, losing my iPhone was the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Ma'am, anything you haven't told me. That's all there is. Seriously. That's the whole story. That's the whole movie. Following me, that's all there is to it. You were in a car that crashed into the river. How you got out of that, no one seems to know. But that experience must have been a serious emotional shock. Like when you open a can of peanut brittle and a springy snake shoots out. I didn't say that. All of us imagine things. Look at me right now, imagining my medical license wasn't revoked. I imagine they were talking about you. Don't you want to join in the things that other people do? Share the experiences of other people? Oh, God, no. Wow. No. Wait. Terrible idea. I do. But I am suggesting that perhaps this figure represents a guilt feeling. Oh, that's ridiculous. I hated those bitches. <laughs> Frankly, I don't know. I could put a stop to it. I just thought I've got to destroy all seven horcruxes. As you say, Doctor. And if I have to, I can go alone. Well, I'll head back to the park and abduct another patient then. <laughs> Despite both the minister and doctor having warned her of the dangers a rotting old carnival may have in store, Mary decides to face it head on. And for a few minutes, she just moseys around. And I may have just lost the paper thin plot here, but I have no clue what exactly she's looking for. The ghoul? But even if she finds him, then what? And if she doesn't find him, will all her fears just melt away? Well, she doesn't find anything, and really no tension is built whatsoever here. She goes home, and the creepy neighbor once again tries to ask her out. After initially turning him down, she decides she wants company again like that morning, and will join him later at night. So I guess her terribly long carnival tour didn't ease her fears as much as she was hoping. She heads to the church to get some practice in, and suddenly she starts seeing dark images of many ghoulish figures dancing in the pavilion. And apparently her playing gets evil-sounding, though it doesn't sound any different than it did earlier. But apparently it is different, and she's told by the minister that she cannot be their organist anymore. However, he encourages her to let the church help her through the clear issues she's suffering from. You know, this whole movie seems to be a parable about not letting women drive. <laughs> Dum de dum de dum, investigating the source of unfathomable evil despite the warnings of both science and religion. Doom de doom de doom de doom. This park soon to reopen as Pirate's World! Yeah, as soon as they find the rusted out van the ice cream bunny's been sleeping in. <laughs> oh, look, a slide. We. Salt water bathing, a refreshing activity humans do. We. Huh? Oh, look, a piece of actual plot development. Ah, who needs it? <laughs> well, guys, by my count, so far it's Carnivals 100, Souls 0. Yep. <laughs> it's a shutout. You mind if I ask you a question? Would you sell me your toenail clippings? <laughs> Break them so. in? No. I'm not afraid of men. Uh, well, you seem sort of cold. Is it because I'm fondling the banister? Is that, yeah. I should be finished around nine. Will that be all right? <laughs> That's okay by me. Off to my room to practice unhooking bras. <laughs> See you in church. Huh? Here hangeth the Lord's bug zapper. <laughs> Another angel gets its wings. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino's favorite scene. <laughs> oh, it's the eye of Sauron's beach house. Drop by this weekend. God, I'm late for work. Oh. Please, sir, um, I have some story. <laughs> 
So wing your partner, do you know? Eat her brains now. Here we go. <laughs> this espresso lover's meetup is off to a good start. Yeah, it's really fun. It's really fun. I like coming here. I love coming here. I come here every week. Debbie Tots. Profane. Sacrilege. What are you playing in this church? We're not zoned for that kind of music. In conscience, I must ask you to resign. <laughs> so what? the music she just played was different somehow? How do you oh, no. know? How can you tell? After having the same bland reaction to being fired as she did from losing her friends in a car accident, which is to say, no real emotions at all, she joins the grease-coated John for their date. Of course, she's just a ray of sunshine after the day she's had, and since she won't drink or dance with him... John's getting upset! And he's just being the sleazo that he is, angry that this clearly disturbed woman isn't accepting his grody advances. She insists she wants to be with him tonight, and, this could be predicted since he was first on screen, that's enough of an invitation for John to try to force his drunken self onto her back in the boarding room. She tries to reject him, thank God, but then she sees the reflection of the ghoul fondling her in the mirror. She has an episode, and though she begs him to stay, John is freaked out and dips, and Mary spends the whole night barricading herself inside. The next morning, the doctor comes over to check on her as he couldn't stop thinking about her fragile mental state, but Mary refuses to accept his aid, and in fact, she wants to get out of this city as quickly as she can, and she leaves without saying a word. But before she can really get on the road, she needs some routine car maintenance done, resulting in thrilling cinema. Sadly, she has another freakout and dashes out of the mechanic's garage in a panic. She flees to the bus station, but suddenly, once again at the screenwriter's convenience, she can't be seen or heard by the world around her. She figures, screw it, and hops onto the next outgoing bus, but only for it to be full of a dozen of her nightmarish monsters. What's the matter? Don't you drink either? <laughs> Not really. Not really. How else is there if you don't drink really? Answer me that. Well, well huh? <laughs> now me, I not only drink really, I really drink. Straight from the big book of dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> You're my date, you know. Yeah, the best dates are the ones where you have to remind her it's a date. <laughs> Tonight I want to be with you. Me or uh, just with anybody? With you. It took her 30 takes to deliver that line without projectile vomiting. <laughs> I don't want to be alone tonight. I want to be near you. I may even love... Hey, is that an ankle monitor? <laughs> you mean that? Yes. God, this is a horror movie. <laughs> oh. oh. You don't want to go in there all by yourself, do you? There could be some oily creep lurking in there. <laughs> you ask me in, you slack me a little, huh? He should just wait 40 years for someone to invent the anime body pillow. Really? <laughs> want to do a Marx Brothers bit? <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Get mixed up with some girl is off our rocker. I don't want to be left alone. How to get left alone in one easy phrase. <laughs> when she freaks out, she reenacts her favorite scenes from setting up a room. She absolutely refuses my help. I can't say that I blame her. There's something about her that completely baffles me. I'm a terrible doctor, and she's right to refuse my help. She feels she needs help. I can't let her stay in this house. You won't have to worry about that. She's determined to leave the city, and she wants to get away as soon as possible. I hope she does leave. Well, you're in luck. She's determined to leave the city, and she wants to get away as soon as possible. <laughs> This breakdown ends with her getting hired to direct ACI films. <laughs> grass, grass, grass. If there's any more driving in this movie, she's going to need to actually get an oil change before the movie is over. Yeah, right. <laughs> that would be good. Oh my God, I was kidding. Hey, Holy, what the? What? Mike! <laughs> Mike! Well, here's your problem. The whole transmission's clogged with souls. No. Somewhere across town, a man screams in his shower. Oh, it's cold! 
You're gonna make it after all. Da, 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 she didn't da, throw a hat. Da, 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 da. No hat. Oh, I know what that wavy film means. She's about to transform into Wonder Woman. What, 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 what movie are you watching, Nelson? Just let me have this. Okay. When does the next bus leave? I must get on it. Somehow this is still the best experience anyone's ever had at a Greyhound station. <laughs> So, is this the carnival? Close enough for me. I guess. I'll take it. Oh, it's the Edgar Winter Group tour bus. Sorry to, sorry to bother you guys. She then tries the train station, because why not? Not like your awful visions have thwarted you at literally every turn so far. May as well give another form of transportation a shot. Being invisible, she gets locked out with nothing else to do but head back to the doctor's office. But to no one's shock and horror but hers, the doctor is not the doctor, but her ghost white antagonist. But in yet another quick twist, she's in her car at the mechanic shop still, apparently just having had a nightmare for the last few minutes. She hurries out of the shop and heads straight back to the carnival where everything has only ever worked out for her. Honestly, what is she looking for now? Last time she went, she found nothing at all and was still haunted. So why is she convinced that it all stems from here and maybe not, oh, I don't know, the town where you nearly died like five days ago? Turns out she was right this time, though, and now she can see all the ghouls dancing in person. And next thing you know, she sees herself as one of them, pancake makeup and all, dancing with her tormentor. She panics and runs as fast as she can, but the villains easily catch up to her, surrounding her to do who knows what. Later, the doctor, minister, and local police show up to find only her car and footprints in the sand, having no clue how she disappeared. Smash cut back to Kansas, where the men are finally successful at dragging the car out of the water, and shock and surprise, Mary is found dead in the car with the other girls. Which leaves many, many unanswered questions, but that is the end of this trying to be terrifying tale. Small towns in Utah, known for their grand operatic train stations. Yeah. Right. You can hear me. She sees us, guys. She doesn't like us. No! Oh my god! Whoa. Whoa. That's a more dangerous stunt than anything Vin Diesel's ever done. <laughs> Good lord. Why can't I hear anything? Shampoo commercial, real quick. Ron, there's a bejeweled game behind you. <laughs> and now some lovely little birds circle her with flowers and scarves, and they spell out, Is this damn thing going anywhere or what? They're everywhere. Not going to let me go. Hey, dead guy, we, we know it's you. We, we can see the top of your head, dead yeah, guy. Yeah, just get, get a bigger chair yeah, next yeah. time. Yeah. Try, you try in a bit, I get it. Yeah. Just blew the whole thing. You've got to tell me what to do. Be with you in a sec. I'm just finishing my clown makeup. Dead guy. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. I just got his bill 50 bucks an hour. Brought to you by the Utah Tourist Board. Utah, come see our small sections of ugly fencing. You know, guys, a horror movie like this makes me wonder, maybe we were too hard on Wicker Man? Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking the same thing. <laughs> I think that's true. Sorry, bees. This would be considered a pretty raucous dance in Minnesota. <laughs> oh, goodness. You know, I don't think we should. We should probably slow it down a oh, bit. Golly, I mean, yeah. this is getting That's too out of hand. It's crazy. I had that, uh, that ranch dip. It was too spicy oh, for me, it. I'll tell you that. Pepper. Was, yes. You want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> uh, never mind. It's not even interesting. <laughs> Hi, Bob Dead Guy. Have you reviewed your life insurance recently? <laughs> At any point did the director think to say, you know what, let's go with expression B for this shot. Yeah. A mouse! Yeah. In a room full of zombies too, but a mouse mostly! Beatlemania goes goth. <laughs> <laughs> Lady. <laughs> Big deal. This happened to me in high school every day after band practice. <laughs> Nelson, Nelson. Nah, nah. 
Hey, uh, Earl, are, are we dead? Well, I'm dead inside, Bernie. I know that. Yeah, same, same. Hey, hey, Padre, give me a good card at bingo tonight. There's five bucks in it for you. Profane! Make it ten bucks. You're on. All right. Hey, Hank, check to see if this whole movie was just a giant misdirection, will ya? Okay, I'll check. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. And now, the big reveal. She wakes up in bed with Bob Newhart. This live show is a ton of fun with two shorts and a not very scary movie, which I honestly appreciate. I'm a wimp when it comes to horror, and with this movie being such a B-movie staple, I was worried it would be more on the intense side, but it's really not, leaning more psychological than actually horrific. But truth be told, it's not really that shocking or interesting. The plot has lots of slow, meandering stretches, which gave our riffers a lot of room to work with. So while I can definitely see why it's a classic riff, I'm a bit befuddled at how this film became such a cult classic. It's not even a so-bad-you-have-to-see-it like a Manos or anything. It's an interesting case, in my opinion. Also, side note, as a lifelong Kansas City resident from the Missouri side, all of the good-hearted ribbing done at Kansas' expense in the first couple scenes are extremely appreciated. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and special thanks to all of my ghoulish Patreon supporters, including Jackie Ball, Kevin Nata, and Isabella Summit. I'm so happy I was able to get this review and my own Rift Halloween short out in time for the spookiest of holidays this year. I also want to give one last big shout out to everyone that donated to my St. Jude's campaign this month during the live streams. We reached our goal, and I couldn't be more proud. And I had so much fun with the streams, we're gonna keep doing them. While I have to miss this Monday, they'll be back on November 8th with the Bridget and Mary Jo watch party. I hope to see you there. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys later.